It is Kathy Douglas here on Hi FM, and with me in the studio, I'm super excited, is Mr. Jonathan Schubert, who is the guy who basically cycled from Muscat to Salala this week, 1,300 kilometres in under 48 hours. And also, we've got Heather in the studio, who was part of the support team. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. Hi nice there. to see you. So, like Jonathan, I mean, I have been covering this story all week. And of course, we talked to you on the phone last week ahead of your record attempt. You know, sickness, heat stroke, crashing your bike, the weather, all these things that happened. I mean, what actually was going through your head at six o'clock in the morning when you left Alilam Palace last Sunday on your bike? I have to admit, it wasn't ideal from the start. Um, I was trying to put to the back of my mind that the night before I'd come down with gastroenteritis. Oh no. <laughs> I knew how hydrated I need to be, needed to be because of the heat and I was losing a lot of water. Um, so I was, just, I was just praying that I could take enough electrolytes and enough water to, to keep me going. But um, yeah, I, I just couldn't really think about it. I was, I've got one shot at this, one go at it. But you must have felt, I mean, most people that feel sick, the last thing they want to do is do any exercise, far less even th- contemplate this amazing, epic journey that you had ahead of you. So there'd been so much planning and so many weeks looking forward to this, so much visualisation in my own mind. It was, it was going to happen and nothing was going to stop me. I was in that, in that mindset. So um, you're right. I think even for me, normally I wouldn't race if I'd come down with something as severe as that. But uh, yeah, I probably wasn't thinking as logically or as in the same um, frame of mind as I usually would. I just had to had to get out there and do this, and I knew I could, and I had to um, try and overcome any problems. Yeah, Heather, you were part of the backup team. You did an amazing job supporting Jonathan on this journey. What was going through your head at six o'clock last Sunday when you were at Alilam Palace? I was excited. I was really looking forward to it. I was going to Salala. Like, I knew John was going to be okay, but I didn't realise how physically and emotionally invested we would have to be being part of the support crew like it was huge it, like, give us an example like all the way along the road we're in the car and I thought we would just um so I trained as a race official so that I could oversee everything that John was doing and making sure he was sticking to the rules so he could get the uh, world record I thought that was going to be my only job I didn't realize that he was going to get sick along the way and we have to take care of him and we have to feed him. We, like, we're doing everything to keep him going. So I didn't expect any. Of Talking that. about the sickness now, you started off, Jonathan, with gastroenteritis on your bike when you set. Off. Apparently, I did hear you did you set off at a blistering pace. All right, <laughs> that <laughs> Sunday, but you were a few hours into your ride. I mean, how long into the ride? And you suffered from quite a bad bout of heat stroke. What happened? We'd been to the weather office a few days prior to the ride and they told us that in the location I was going to be in the warmest temperature we faced during the day was about 27 degrees um, and it hit 27 degrees before 11 o'clock and kept Mm. climbing and went up in the desert up to over 31 Um, and already being dehydrated that wasn't ideal and um, I found myself in a spot of difficulty I didn't really recognize the symptoms but I knew knew I didn't feel right Um, this must have been maybe about two o'clock in the afternoon and I, I climbed from the bike the all the support team the three cars they stopped they got me under the car they got me in some shade um, and then I, I started to suffer intense pins and needles all over my body um, I, my body started to go into cramp uh, I couldn't move my hands my arms they all became rigid tightness across my chest I started to lose feeling the team got very worried because I couldn't speak properly I was losing control of the muscles in my face oh and my god um, I knew it was serious at the time. The, the team weren't letting on how serious they knew it was. Um, but I think I, I came very close, very close to, to death at that point. And they, they managed to cool me down for about half an hour, long enough to recover, enough to get back on the bike. But that was a very close call. <laughs> to get back on the bike after... Do you know what? It's, it's incredible. It's unbelievable. The original plan was 36 hours, was it? I, mean, I set myself a schedule of 36 hours because I thought that was possible, all things being ideal. Um, and as we've already started discussing, a lot of things didn't go to plan, but I was still confident that I had given myself enough leeway to get under that magic two-day mark.
you know, all those problems that you suffered it would be enough to floor absolutely anybody. Was there any point during that ride when you were either crashing off your bike at 50 kilometres an hour, lying there all half dead from heat stroke, that you didn't visualise yourself in Salala within the next few hours? I think late into the first night, I was despairing a bit because as much as my mind wanted to push and my legs felt good, um, I, w- I was really suffering with my stomach and the uh, I couldn't, I was really struggling to eat food and if you don't have the energy in your legs, how are you going to pedal? So I was I was sort of not really seeing a solution to this and luckily, my, I w- despite the discomfort I was in, I was managing to put food inside myself. It was painful, um, a lot of it was, was in liquid form and it was giving me enough energy and I dropped the intensity so I was burning mostly fat uh, and, and I managed to carry on but I was questioning during the night whether I would have the energy to I suppose uh, actually Heather Heather also joining me from UB Cool part of the support team I suppose that was part of your job or one of the main parts of your job was just basically to encourage Jonathan uh, because you you know you need to, you need to have that you need to have people behind you saying you can do this you can do this you can do this yeah we were trying to motivate him as much as possible and even though we were maybe scared and concerned or whatever, we didn't want to show him that because we have to keep his spirits and his morale up. So we've got the window in the car down, we're shouting things to him, we're playing him music, we're playing games out the window. Just, I know you hated that game, John, I'm so sorry. <laughs> what game was that? I was telling him um, just random facts of life. <laughs> but he's a teacher, so he knows all these facts. So I'm telling him things he's already... But I'm just trying to... Like do anything to make him not think about probably how much his stomach hurts at this point. Oh, what a shame! I and know. he got a bit angry with me at the end. He's like, "Okay, Heather, that's enough. I just want to cycle on my own." Could you imagine how angry we'd have been <laughs> if you were playing I Spy with him <laughs> in the dark? In the dark, for hundreds of kilometers. Oh yeah. god! So the, the the feeling of rolling into Salala after thirteen hundred kilometers and forty seven hours and twenty one minutes. How was that feeling? I mean, can you describe it? It was a slow process because there's a you've been climbing for the last 300 kilometers gradually and then then there's a big steep climb into Salala and uh, I, I quite enjoyed that I knew I was close and then it was the elation getting to the top this was 4:30 in the morning and so many Omanis had come out in Salala to you know these I don't think these people were cyclists they they'd just been inspired by what they'd heard and I was oblivious to all this and there's just people everywhere at the top of the climb cheering me on they'd driven out. Um, that was that was immense. That was amazing. Um, and then there was a big descent. And then the welcome party was at the bottom of the bottom of the mountain. And there were kids, young kids, well under the age of ten. Many of them, lots and lots of people. And they were again all out before five o'clock in the morning. Uh, and they were they were in genuine admiration for what I'd done. And that was that was really humbling to, listen, to experience. Listen, listen, man. We are all in genuine admiration for what you've done. I mean, what you've done is incredible. It's like mind boggling, it's astonishing, it's astounding. And uh, have you had the world record um, verified? Is, are, are you, is it official yet? As the race official, uh, I say it's official, but we need to go through all the paperwork so he can get the official certificate and stuff. But he stuck to the rules and I'm happy with everything that he did. Fantastic. Jonathan Schubert, the world record holder. Jonathan, I put, he's sitting there. He's not very excited. I'm no, so he's excited so for you. He's and that's the so cool humble. Thing. Things are going to change for you now. I mean, how, like, what's next? I mean, how can you top that? What are you going to do? How are you going to cope with your sort of celebrity status and what's next on the bike? I, th- I think I've been looking forward to a rest for a long time, long before this <laughs> actually started. The planning and preparation has been massive. Um, but you're right, I'll probably get bored of that quite quickly. So I have to look for a new project. Um, Heather's already suggested something to me. So uh-huh. There are some things in the uh, in the pipeline. Excellent. But uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be a bit, bit strange going back to work, back to teaching next week, uh, back to reality. Yeah. Well, listen, I am, I am so happy for you and I'm so chuffed that you were able to come in and chat in the studio this afternoon. And once again, a huge million congratulations, Jonathan Schubert! This is Hi 